Good morning and welcome. We are glad that you are here. If you're able, I invite you to stand and let's worship God this morning.
place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you,
loving God, we thank you so much for who you are. Oh, God, it's so good to be in your very presence in this place. How we praise and adore you for that. Father, just to know that your grace receives us each and every time. We just get still and get quiet and turn to you. And God, it's everything. It's everything to our life to just be yours. And how we thank you for that, Lord God. We praise you so very much. God, I thank you for each that have gathered here in this place today. And, and I pray that each have come prayed up and ready to receive what all that you have already been pouring out upon us through your presence, through your wisdom, through your guidance in our lives. God, I pray that for those who have tuned in the same, that, Lord, that they can be in, in, in a quiet space where they can just encounter you in a real way. God, our desire is to see those that we love and care about in our families and neighborhoods and workplaces and even total strangers in our community and beyond. We desire that they, too, experience you the way that we are so privileged to do. God, use us in ways that will help point them in the very direction of who you are and how to have a life-transforming encounter with you. Father, we give ourselves to you and just ask as we continue in this spirit of worship that you just attune our hearts and minds to all that it is that you would pour into us, God. And we give ourselves to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It's complicated. <laughs> You've likely heard that expression, right? It's complicated. And typically, the context of that expression often is in uh, relation to modern-day relationships. You know, sometimes people will be uh, curious about maybe, are, are you seeing this person? Or are you a part of this person's life? Or are you in some way connected with this person? And it just goes beyond, you know, explanation at the moment. And so the typical response might be, well, it, it's complicated. And what that generally means is either it's just a long sort of drawn out story and I just don't have time for that right now or it just ain't none of your business and I'm just not going to tell you right now. So, you know. I wonder sometimes um, about Mary and Joseph back in the day, you know, when she began to uh, be showing that she was carrying a child and how the people in that community might have looked upon her and had multiple questions for her, I'm sure, as to, uh, well, now how to you know, what's going on here? You and Joseph aren't yet married. And, you know, she tried, I'm sure, with the old, um, well, I've not been with, with him. I, I've not been with any man. You see, this, this, this child, yes, I am pregnant, but yes, this child, this child comes from God. It's from the Holy Spirit of God. And imagine the looks and the comments, right? Say, what? She should have just said, it's complicated. It's complicated, right? But then life in general can be complicated, can it? Oh, how we yearn for sometimes, right? Give me something simple. Have you ever prayed that prayer before of like, oh, Lord, just give me a boring day. Can I just be bored for one day? Just calm me down just a little bit. Um, aside from the daily sort of eating, sleeping, and normal hygiene of life, um, my complicated week this week had a multifaceted um, week. I had some, some really good family time. You know, Father's Day was last Sunday, so we had some good family meals together, some good family time together. I got to FaceTime the Nashville family with the grand boys. That's always a joy. We got to have all of that. I took my, my mother-in-law needed to go to the doctor, so I got her in the car. We took her to the doctor. I cut the grass, which that, of course, as you all know, needed that desperately. Then there's this book that I picked up a week or so ago that I was kind of into it. It's the kind of thing where you fall asleep at night trying to figure it out, and I'm yearning to get into it and not fall asleep so that I can really carry on a little bit more of it. Then there was lots, and I mean lots, of admin time for things around here and this place, just normal stuff, just a, a lot more of it, it seemed, this week. There were the normal household chores at home, and then I did have my, my morning alone time with God. And that's a beautiful thing for me, and it's so cherished for me. And I think this week, I, I missed a day. I know I missed one day, and that's pretty good. 
but you know, the rest of the week, I, I, was, I was just right there each morning. Called my mom a couple of times this week, got to talk to her. I sequestered myself a little bit this week as well because I was trying to think about this Sunday and, and, and ongoing as to kind of where I felt like God was leading us as his family to study together and to worship together. So I kind of got off and got quiet about that. We had this dance camp here this week. I got to see a wonderful program with some really cute kids that were in this program, and they were amazing, and that was so much fun. There was a family celebration that took place here yesterday, and I was so privileged and honored to be able to be a part of that, and it meant so much to me. And now I'm here this morning to worship with the people that I love to the God that I love, right? Whew. And there's more. I'm sure there's lots more. I just can't think of all of it in the moment. But, but you get the picture, right? Because you live the picture, right? There's lots going on in life. It can be busy. It can be complicated. Have you ever thought about this question? Is God simply one of these aspects of your otherwise busy, complicated life? Or is he the entirety, the overall everything of your life? Now, I know we have to do things. You know, you have to eat, you have to sleep, you have to pay the bills, you have to work, you have to find, you have to do those things, take care of the kids, get them where they need to be, etc. But, 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 is God something that you squeeze into this really crazy schedule with all these things that are happening, one after the other after the other? And whether your calendar is on paper form or on your phone or whatever it is, do you, do you kind of try to, to ease him out? Oh, wait, 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 here, here's a little time I can fit God into right here. Or it's Sunday morning, oh, do I sleep late? Well, let's get up and go to church. And here's God right here. Do you kind of fit him in? Or is God over all of it? Is he who makes your life make sense? Is he, he alone who makes you whole and complete? Does God give every one of these other aspects of your life, every one of them, as mundane as they could be or as challenging and difficult as they, they may be, does God give every one of those other aspects of your life meaning and purpose? I hope you won't be too quick to answer because I'm going to pray that you will wrestle with God on this one as I am. And I mean really wrestle with him. Let's get real. Let's get honest. Let's get just downright raw with ourselves. Is he an important component of our lives? Or is he our everything? Everything. Our reason, our point, our purpose for living. Is he your every breath? There's a single verse that I would like for us to look at this morning a little more deeply, no pun intended, you'll understand that in just a moment, um, that's going to set the stage for the next several weeks as we study God's word together, as we dig deeper within ourselves to discover what is the depth of our heart for him. Proverbs 20, verse 5. I invite you to join me there. Proverbs 20, verse 5. Uh, you'll see the words behind me. Um, I hope you have your Bibles with you as well. Those of you at home, the same. I hope you that are tuning in will have your scriptures on your devices with you such that you can, can sort of uh, tag it, earmark it somehow to, to let, it, let it wash all over you today but throughout the week as well. We'll revisit it over the next several weeks as well. Proverbs 20 verse 5. The purpose in a man's heart is like deep water 
but a man of understanding will draw it out. That's the verse. The purpose of a man's heart is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. The purpose. Some of your translations may, the counsel, may say the counsel or the intent of a man's heart. The very function of the heart. The heart. We talk about the heart. Our day and time, we have sort of minimized what that truly means. Not just the physical organ, but the, the sense of heart that is within each of us. In the ancient world, they understood very clearly that the heart was the very deepest, deepest inner part of you and I. It was the very depth of our soul. It was the reason for living. It was just the very center of all things that helped everything else in life function. The heart was significant. The purpose, the intent of a man's heart, that deep, deep, deep part of us. Deep can be mysterious, can't it? Deep can be unknown. Sometimes there are parts of us that we, we, we've kind of held at bay a little bit to be a little mysterious and even unknown to ourselves. But the, the purpose of our heart is like deep, deep water. But the man of understanding, the man of intelligence, the man of some common sense knows how to draw it out. Knows how to draw out from within that depth of heart within each one of us. I mean, picture that, that, that the deepest well you can imagine, right? And, and, and there is, there's water down there somewhere. And it's that idea of rope and bucket and you're going in there and you're trying to get some of it. You're just trying to get it back up. It's that idea that within ourselves, there is this deep, deep place within each and every one of us that, that, that is hard to see sometimes in each other. Sometimes it's hard to acknowledge in ourselves, but there's a depth within us that's complicated and it goes way, way down within our spirit and our soul. And it's like the man of, of, of intelligence and wise counsel and, and the one who really wants to live is the one who can get down into that depth and pull it up, draw it out. What good is the water in the well if it just stays there? If you don't get it out, right? If you don't draw it out. We were created in the image of almighty, all loving, all powerful, all created God. Every one of us created in his image. We were created by God to reflect his glory. We were created to bring honor to his name. Sometimes I think about that and it sounds kind of simple, doesn't it? I mean, if, if we wake up every morning and think, well, whatever it is that I'm about today, just so long as I bring honor to the very creator who created me in his image, that's what it's all about. And it sounds really simple. But is it? But is it? Isn't reflecting his glory and reflecting his light and image and being all that God has created us to be so others see him in us, isn't that contingent upon us having a depth of experience and love and knowledge and understanding and desire for him? Our hearts run deep. We are not meant to be shallow people, are we? Our hearts run deep. That's how God created us, to be complicated and deep people. We're created by him, engineered by him to be people of depth with meaningful hearts and souls and spirits. You, you are a complicated and deep soul. You are. But I invite you to join me to explore this. Have you, have you drawn out? Have you reached down and grabbed and drawn out that depth of your heart for anyone else? 
to see and experience? Can they see the image of God in you that, that, that's in that depth of you, in that depth of your heart? Can they see that? Do they see the reflection of his glory in you? Can you they, they sense that honor that you bring to his name. Have you allowed anyone else to draw that depth of heart out of you? I hope there are people in your life that can, can be so raw and real and honest with you that they can just pull that right up and out of you. This is hard, isn't it? And it's harsh. It's real. But we've got to wrestle with this. We've got, to, we've got to get a handle on this. Are we living to honor God, to serve him, to bring him glory in the simple everyday words and actions of life? Or are we living to honor God, serve him, and bring him glory from the absolute depths of your heart? and your soul, and your spirit. He put it there. He gave it to you. He gave it to me for us to use it. We can't hold it down there. We got to pull it out and let others see. We've all had the joy, I'm sure, of a paper cut somewhere along the way, right? You remember very annoying surface kind of thing, but you know how it goes, right? You get something like that, and it seems that every time you then go to touch something, you aggravate it yet again, and you sort of kick yourself that you're not, you know, paying better attention. Or maybe it's a toothache. You know how they go, right? And you just are like, if only, if only. You just want, give me something, make it go away, or a headache. And you're just like, Ah, there's got to be some way for this to stop and to leave me. That kind of cuts a little deeper, doesn't it? Or when you have surgery. If you've ever had surgery, and despite the happy pills that the doctor gives you, there's still, there's still some pain and discomfort, right? And in some cases can be just whew, overpowering. That sort of pain can be shallow or it can go deeper, can't it? But then there's other kinds of pain too, like, for instance, when, when you find that you've been the, the subject of someone's gossip or, or, or some folks that you thought were really good friends and all of a sudden you understand, oh, okay, that's who they're talking about. Hmm. And they don't even really know the details. They don't know the truth. You're like, well, that, that stings. That hurts. Or maybe it gets to a place of just out and out betrayal. Where someone just turns their back very intentionally upon you and just hurts you to the core. That's tough. Maybe it's a loss. Just an all out loss, a physical loss of someone that you love and cared for so very deeply and they're gone now. And it pr brings a void to you. It brings a pain to us, doesn't it? We've all been there. That's a deeper, deeper kind of feeling, isn't it? We feel deeply, don't we? We, we, we feel deeply. That's some of the depth of our heart? Do we feel that sense of desire for God? That sense of encountering and wanting to encounter him more, wanting to know him more, wanting to, to grasp his character even more, particularly in whatever life situation we are in? Do we have that same sort of depth of understanding and, and, and feeling for God that we might have for other sorts of pains in life because it's that kind of depth that can soothe those pains in life when we've got God down in the very depths of our being like that. Is that 
how you yearn for him? Is that what you wake up in the mornings thinking, oh God, give me more. We've been singing about that this morning already. Do you mean it? Give me more, God. I want to experience you even more. Is that the kind of depth that you find yourself in? There's, there's this, this place in us that God put there. He created it, and he wants to fill it. Have you let him? Have you welcomed him too? Have you just gotten everything else out of the way so that God can pour into you all that is himself and take that very deepest part of you and just touch it with his love and his grace and his power and his everything? He just wants to be right there deep, deep, deep within you. Is that your desire for him? What does it look like in you? And what does it live like in you? And if there is that in you, if you have that, that, that depth of God, oh, that sweet, sweet, wonderful depth of God, what does it take to draw that out, to draw that out and bring it to the surface so that you can just bask in it every day and others too can see the glory of God in and through you? purpose of a man's heart is like deep water deep water but a man of understanding will draw it out let's talk just a little bit about that sort of depth of our heart and let me ask first do, do you have a depth of heart for other people and I'm sure the answer to that is yes there's certain people in your lives I'm sure that you just have this this deep longing and feeling for and you care about them so much. But do you know those people that are always seemingly wearing a mask? You know, and, you, and you're kind of like, can't we go deeper in this relationship? Can't, can't, can't there be some, some deeper sharing than, than what we have here? But, but it's hard to do. It's a challenge when someone else is wearing a mask all the time, when they're just kind of pretending along the way. I have a friend that I see on a very frequent basis and every time I see him you know we have that that normal exchange as you do when you encounter someone that 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 you're you're friends with and you like to see him hey what's going on how you doing today and his answer is always the very self same thing no matter what I am blessed and highly favored every time I am blessed and highly favored and that's a beautiful thing isn't it I'm glad he's blessed and highly favored. I, I feel the same way too. But this guy, let me tell you something. He could be hanging out of the jaws of a shark and I would ask him and he'd say, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. And I'm thinking, in this moment, you're really not. It's okay to be real. It's okay. You know, if you had a flat tire on the way into work this morning or an argument with somebody along the way or something didn't go right or you know the finances are falling apart whatever the case you can be real and that's okay that's okay draw out some of that depth and let's be deep with one another maybe you know one of those folks too that in a similar way kind of wears that mask and they're trying to make up for something that's lacking within themselves. And so they're just running, 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 going, 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 going. And they just want to just make sure that, that everyone thinks that their life is just perfect all the time. And there's a part of me when I encounter folks like that that I just want to say, mm, come on, let's draw something from the depth of you that can be real. Maybe we could help each other. Maybe God would touch you in that if you would just, just, just be real and honest about it. Sometimes you, you, you have a conversation with someone like that where you might just kind of bait the hook a little bit and say, hey, what, 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 what about this? I, I, I've noticed this happening in your life or this doesn't quite seem like you. Something doesn't, something seems a little out of place. It just doesn't seem quite right for you. And they deflect it off to something else. Oh, no, 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 that wasn't me. That was so-and-so. So-and-so did that. Or that wasn't, uh, uh, you know, my deal. That was something else that happened. No, you know, you just, you don't misunderstand the details. Or maybe they say, oh, well, you know, I was just trying to do such and such. They have some sort of ulterior motive that makes no sense whatsoever to the situation. And you just simply want 
to love on them and help them because you do love them. Can we be real? Sometimes there's that someone that's just been burned and they're like, "Uh uh-uh, I've built a wall and you're not coming through it no matter what. And that's that. And the wall is there and you just, your heart breaks for them, right? Because you know they need, they need a shoulder to cry on. They need someone to share with. We all do. And you just desire that we can just kind of get through that. It's tough. Sharing the depth of your heart with other people, it's risky, isn't it? We have to be careful. But that's how we're created. He gave us deep waters within our heart so that we would draw them out. And as other people share the depth of their hearts with us, that too can be risky, can't it? We have to be careful because they're trusting us when they do. They're trusting, and all that speaks volumes. One of the biggest threats, in my opinion, to this whole depth of heart sharing with other people is what I call naive, preachy Christians. And I know that sounds really ugly, but let me explain before you judge me here, okay? Because it's complicated, right? You know those folks, and they mean so well. They love Jesus. They love the church and the family and what it stands for. But somehow they've lost touch with what's going on beyond themselves. And so you encounter someone who comes from a different walk of life. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, if you had, you know, made better decisions in your life, or if you had done this, or if you hadn't done that. Just assuming that, because I might have had this amazing gift of God to be raised in a Christian home and to understand how that all fits together. And because I have not been exposed to some of the things that other people have been exposed to. You don't get to pick your parents, right? So I didn't get exposed to some of the things that they did, some of the difficulties and the challenges and the hardships that were a daily occurrence for them. It's easy for me to just kind of blow that off and say, well, you know, you wouldn't be in that fix you're in if you had made better decisions, or you wouldn't be where you are right now if you just used a little bit better sound judgment, or what do you think? Get a job, do this. You know, we can have all manner of ways of sort of preaching to them and diagnosing them and determining what's wrong there when we don't really know what's going on. We, as followers of Christ, we have to know what's going on out there, don't we? We got to know what's happening out there in the world around us, and we've got to open up our minds to the realities of what's going on in the world out there and recognize that as lovely and sweet as our beautiful town is, that doesn't mean that there isn't brokenness and hardship and difficulties that are right next door to where we live or work or shop or do whatever it is that we do in our lives. There's hardships out there right now. I don't know if you saw where, where um, our sheriff and law enforcement team in Volusia County had one of the biggest drug busts ever that just recently happened this week. They said they got like uh, just shy of 40 people that they got a hold of, and they said, oh, man, this is going to decrease the fentanyl distribution like we wouldn't believe. I forgot the stats, but it was something astronomical about what they were able to secure in this drug bust could have literally gotten to thousands of people, all of which whose lives were at risk. And there's at least another 30-something plus people still out there that they're on the hunt for that are related to this same group. That's in Volusia County where we live, right? And we might think, oh, well, you know, that was more over in the Daytona Beach area. That's fine. But, you know, those folks come this way to do their business, don't they? We don't know what goes on behind the closed doors of every one of our neighbors or coworkers, do we? And it can be hard. And it can be rough. And when we begin to share deeply with them, when we begin to draw out from the depths of us and hopefully draw out from the depths of them, It can be rough going if we're not careful. It can rock our world if we're not 
open-minded to what is the reality of the world out there beyond the walls of our home and beyond the walls of this, our home in church. Rhonda and I have a friend that um, we had known for some time now there was some stuff happening and we thought, gosh, that's a shame. We knew she kind of wasn't herself. And we talked to her about it and said, hey, what can we do to help you? Is, uh, do you need anything? And, oh, no, 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 that's fine. And yet we knew that, that things that would happen in and around her and when we were with her, we could see there was this sort of dramatic reaction that wasn't necessarily typical of how she would be all the time. And we thought, that's kind of odd. And not too long ago, it, it, it was just kind of happenstance that, that the two of us, my wife and I, were together with her, and we were able to chat with her just a little bit. And, and Rhonda's so much better this, at this than I am. She was able to just sort of pull it out of her, you know? And the next thing you know, we kept hearing story after story after story. Well, then this happened. We're like, oh, no. Oh, my gosh, we had no idea you were going through that. Well, then, well, and then this happened. And what? And it just got worse and worse and worse. And, and, and here I found myself just this, this mixed bag of emotions of thinking, yeah, I was, just, you know, I was just tired of the drama. I'd had enough of that stuff. But now I'm seeing, wait, 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 wait. Wow. If I had to bear that kind of burden myself, all of that, all of that just poured out on top of me, whew. It changes our perspective, doesn't it? When we're able to see into the depths of someone else's being and lives, when they share it with us, when we're able to draw it out of them in ways, in ways that can be very, very healthy and restoring and healing. The purpose of a man's heart is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. We need each other in real and raw life. He's created us for community. And one who has a deep heart for God, I believe, will have a deep heart for others as well. Let's shift gears for just a moment and talk about a, a, a depth of heart for yourself. For yourself. I believe until you're honest with yourself, and I'm honest with myself, it's really hard to get there with other people, you know? And he's certainly not going to get there with God if we can't be honest when we look in the mirror and see ourselves. Can you remember a situation or a season in your life when you thought, eh, if I just avoid that, if I just avoid that, or if I just ignore that, or I, I, I'm just not going to think about that, and maybe it'll just go away. Maybe it'll just go away, right? Or if I busy myself with something else, anything else, everything else, then maybe, maybe it'll just, just kind of go away. God knows the very depths of our hearts, the very depths of our being. And so there's really no point, is there? There's no point whatsoever in us not recognizing, in us not acknowledging, in us not being honest with ourselves, and in us not seeking what it is that he would have us to do about it. The purpose of a man's heart is in deep waters, but a man of understanding will draw it out. We've got to draw that stuff up and out of ourselves, don't we? We can push it down all day long, but we got to pull it out in a way that it can restore and reconcile us to God, to others, and to where we can sleep at night because we know we, we've listened to his counsel and followed what it is he's instructed us to do. Can you remember a time or a season in your life when you thought, I, I, I just don't like that part of me. I just don't. And gosh, if, if they, my church family, my friends, my coworkers, my neighbors, if my people knew that part of me, ooh, 
they wouldn't love me either. That's just, that's just, that's just, just make it go away. And every time you, it surfaces again, you just think, ah, let's bury it deeper. Some people are masters of doing that, aren't they? They can just push it so far down that it's almost like it's non-existent. But then something triggers and it rears its ugly head again. Maybe, maybe God is providing some sort of understanding to draw that out of you, to draw that out of me, so that once and for all we can finally, finally deal with it. But this time, instead of dealing with it our way, we deal with it under his guidance and with his grace. It just doesn't get any better than that. Draw it up and out. I think as we have that sense of depth of understanding with ourselves and are honest and raw with ourselves enough to draw all that up and out, I think that's when we're set. I believe that's when we can sincerely and genuinely desire God the way he created us to do so. We need this depth of relationship with others and with self in order to have that true depth of relationship with God. He's our absolute best, our most trusted, our most knowing, our most accepting, most grace-filled, most loving, most powerful, most desiring to transform us. Relationship there is. But do we go deeper in our hearts with him? It's the depth of our heart for God only you can answer that. Where, where, where is that? How deep does it go? A crowd of people are gathered around Jesus. And <laughs> he began to talk to them in parables and to share, share parable stories in order to teach them the truth of the gospel. In Matthew chapter 13, he, he talks about the, the sower and the seeds. You may be familiar with that parable. And one of the things he mentions, there, there's different alternatives of what happened to the seeds that the farmer, the sower, was sowing. One of those was that it fell on rocky soil. And I had I studied this some this week, and I, I had never seen this before, but I read an article by um, one of the historians who said, when, when they refer to this rocky soil, what I was often thinking about was it was just like if you grabbed a, a handful of dirt and it was loaded with rocks in it and, you know, just other junk in the soil so that it wasn't like a, a good solid soil to get roots bound into. And this historian said that's not the case. That's not it at all. That some of the terrain back in the ancient world in that part of the, the world was such that there was just a, a, a rock bed, just a solid rock, but it had just a thin layer of pretty good soil that kind of came over top of it. And the idea was, yeah, you could sow seed in that soil, and a plant would begin to germinate and would begin to grow, but the roots didn't have anywhere to go. The roots didn't have anywhere to go. And so when the elements came upon the the plant, whatever that might have been, they just destroyed it. It didn't stand a chance because it wasn't in, didn't go deep, right? Isn't that true about us? We can, we can talk about God and we can, can share about how much we love him and this and I've gone to church and I've done this and I've studied that and I've read this and I've prayed and all that. But if those roots aren't deeply, deeply embedded in a real life-transforming, life-giving, invigorating, restoring, reconciling relationship to him. What happens when life comes upon you and me? And we face these difficulties and these challenges and somebody just kind of yanks the rug out from under us and we find ourselves in a really painful, difficult place. I've seen so many folks who love the Lord and then someone looks at them cross-eyed or says something backwards to them and they're like, well, I don't need that anymore. And they're done. 
because those roots weren't embedded somewhere deep there. And those things are minor compared to real life, aren't they? I mean, the, the kind of difficulties that we all do face ultimately. We need that depth. We need to be fully and deeply heart and soul and spirit engaged with God. I'm grateful for the, uh, the water graphics. They, they're perfect for, for kind of where we are here. A quote from Colin Labrosse. He says, God requires deep waters because deep waters are mandatory for diving. And if you're diving, that means you're going all in. You can't dive into shallow waters, can you? When God calls you to dive by faith, God is calling you to dive into some deep water. If we as Christ followers, if we desire to fulfill his calling, his mission upon our lives, to be the movement of God that he has called and equipped and gifted us to be, to go out there into the world and actually influence the world for Christ, to change the world for Christ, then we've got to go deep, don't we? We've got to dive deep into those deep waters and we've got to draw out from within ourselves and prayerfully help draw out within those that we encounter that, that depth of spirit so that we can let them see the beautiful God that created us and them. Man's heart is like deep water, but one of understanding draw it out. Let's pray together. Loving Emily, Father, thank you so much that you love us so deeply, that you care about us so very, very much. God, there are days when it just feels so awesome and incredible that you know everything there is to know about us before, after, during, everything there is to know. And yet there are other times, God, that I, I think sometimes we try to hide that as if that's even possible. I pray, God, that you would just continue to ignite within us this sense of, of deep, deep, deep desire to take the, 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 the most tender part of our soul and spirit and just give it all completely and totally surrendered to you. And God, as we do, I, I just so believe that you just continue to grow us, to, to help those roots to go even deeper into you, God, in ways that give us just a whole new perspective about life. It doesn't mean that we never face any difficulties or any challenges or, or pain or loss. No, we face those things, and they will hurt, and they will hurt deeply. They will make us feel deeply, but God, we know that when we are just absolutely rooted in you, that you're right there for us and with us and through it all. God, I pray that you would help us to be honest with ourselves. <laughs> stop playing games, stop pretending. And Father, for the people that we love so dearly, help us begin with them to help finding those, those, those deep and difficult places within one another that as we do draw that out, that we can share in ways that will honor you in such a beautiful, beautiful context, God, such that, that others who don't know you can begin to see there is so much a better way. Use us, I pray, Lord God, to fulfill your calling and your mission in this community and beyond. Oh, God, how we long to see lives committed to you, a community that says, we're not going to put up with what's out there in the world, but instead, Lord God, 
we are just going to commit ourselves to you and what it is that you've called us to do and who it is that you've called us to be. And God, we just want to hear the gates of hell shaking because of the movement you've created in your people. We love you, we praise you, and we surrender ourselves to you fully and completely in the name, precious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to just take these moments now as we are once again led in worship. Maybe God is just calling you to stand and praise him. And I hope you'll do just that alongside these beautiful people and just, just praise and adore him for all your worth because of how good he is to you and you are just experiencing that depth of him. If, if you're in a place, though, where you feel like you're not quite there yet and you need a moment, pray. Come to the altar and pray. Come pray with me, with one another, in ways that you cry out to God and seek his, his direction. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is in your life, oh, how we all pray and desire that you would surrender yourself to him in a way that will change your life forever. And we would love to celebrate that with you. If you'd like to step down and share with that, that with us, we will definitely just rejoice with you. However it is that God is speaking to you, Oh, how I hope you'll listen and respond to him.
Let's pray. God, as we step from these moments, from this space, God, we don't just simply step into the next layer, the next aspect of our life, but God, wherever our feet take us, we go with you because you are our all. We give ourselves to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ.